having your scrolls repaired. They will be returned to you soon. Thank you, Father. It is getting late and I am tired. She had not been asleep long when again she was awoken by the chilling mist. There, the misty lights hung just as they had done the night before. She walked towards the mist, wondering how strange it was that she could have the same dream again. As she approached the ghostly figure, she heard a voice whisper, There are things you must see, come with me, come with me. It was strange to the princess, because although the message was the same, the voice was different. The voice was that of a man. Strangely, it sounded like her father, but much older. Again, the voice repeated, Come with me, come with me, come with me and you shall see. Take me back, then I will see. Again, the mist and light enveloped her, and she flew through the city and across the mountains and valleys. She arrived at the gates of the house, where a powerful judge lived. There, she saw a man being dragged before the great and powerful judge. You are guilty, I sentence you to two years! What is my crime, most honorable one? Silence! You should not speak in my presence! What has this poor man done? He has done no wrong. He is a poor but honest man. A merchant both wealthy and powerful desired his land. When he refused to part with it, the merchant went to the judge with offers of gold and silver. And so the judge commanded his guards to seize the man and bring him before his court. But what will happen to him? He will be taken to prison, where he will be forced to toil as a slave for many years. His land will be declared abandoned, and the wealthy merchant, alas, will have his way. Take me home! Please take me home! She found herself in the safety of her bedchamber. She wanted to believe that this too was just a dream, but the heavy tears that still lay upon her face did little to convince her otherwise. Weary and heavy-hearted, she fell into slumber. Again in the morning, she told her father of what she had dreamt. Who is the scoundrel who is poisoning you with these lies? No one, Father. It was just but a dream. I am sorry to upset you. Lock all the doors and windows in the palace. We have an intruder. If he's still here, we will find him. If he's gone and tries to return, we will seize him. Should I also lock the princess's windows and doors? No. I've done much to upset her already today, and she was probably at rest. The intrusion at this hour is greatly crime here. We need not worry, for a balcony is high above the ground, and only the rushing river lies for the moment. The princess, exhausted from the events of the day, quickly fell into a deep slumber. But again, the chilling mist returned, and without delay, she rose from her bed and stepped towards the swirling cloud of mist and light. again was changed. It was that of a young woman and seemed strangely familiar, almost as if she were hearing herself speak. Without hesitation, the princess replied, Let us go. This time, she flew far from the palace and over the waves of a great ocean, and there she saw a raging battle encircling a small island. This time, she did not land but floated above the scene of horror. Anchored about the island were great ships of war. There, cannon bursts peppered the dark night with flashes of light. On the island, men wielded axes and swords, fought against one another, and slayed their brothers. Why do they battle and kill each other? They are fighting for the island. Why is the island of such value? It is not. Then. Why do they fight so? Because each believes it is theirs. But if it has no value, why do they care? 
They have fought over for many years, and no one remembers how or why the battle began. And so now they continue to fight, because it is what they have always done.